that. Let's play a little Merchant Colony. Merchant Colony is made in 1991 by Impressions. It was uh, it was made for the Amiga, the, the IBM PC, and I'm sure several other platforms. The copy I have is for the IBM PC. So let's pick us a fine graphics mode. Let's go with the 256 colors and let's get that ad lib sound going. Oh, that's some sweet music right there. Alright, let's pick a Let's go with average difficulty. Let's play for a hundred years. Right here we are in our office. The game takes place in uh, basically three places. You've got your office, you've got the world map, and then you can zoom into these individual areas of the map that you can navigate by holding down the right mouse button and then dragging or using the uh, arrow keys to move the arrow around in the world map view there we go we can move the arrows around in the world map view and then use the space bar the inner key to zoom in it's easier to use the mouse you can also when you're hovered over something hit the space bar rather than clicking It works with ports and ships too. All right, which is handy uh, because there's a little bit of jittery lag due to the age of the game and the speed of the current, the modern mouse. So when you go to click, sometimes you jerk. So it's if you only have to get it over it and then hit space bar, you can be more accurate sometimes. That's what I've found. Alright, let's go into a little office over here. And uh, the areas that you can access in the office are, as you've already seen, the world map. You can go into the people purchase screen, which allows you to purchase people to put them on a ship and take them to places around the world. You can go into the ship purchase screen, which allows you to purchase the three different kind of ships. This one holds more, this one holds the middle, this one holds less, but this one is strong against pirates, medium against pirates, and weak against pirates. This is your ledger. And these numbers are these things here. Basically the only one you need to really worry with is the annual reports. This is how well you're doing and if you're making money or not. But you can see with the rest of these what they are. just a breakdown of you can click on these items to see if you were interested in what cigars were selling for it would show you to buy them here sell them here same with your coffee beans these uh, you have two types of goods you've got uh, finished goods and then materials these are materials if you convert them in a factory they become the finished goods which finished goods will sell for more of course then the materials will. Uh, same with uh, sugar cane and sugar, cotton and rugs, tobacco with the cigars, coconuts and rum, coffee and coffee, cows and meat. Uh, coal is just a commodity in and of itself and so is gold. You can also go to the bank which is where you can borrow money or pay back the loans that you've borrowed. Typically you're going to want to borrow a little bit of money. I only borrowed to about a thousand total. Not borrow a thousand. I'll borrow until I have a thousand funds. Because I normally will buy a cargo ship and you'll see it sell by when you purchase it to go to the port. Now you can't buy a ship until you clear the port. 
So go ahead and send this one out on a away from port. And then you can go in and purchase another one. Now we're going to purchase two frigates. There we go. Because a pirate shows up not too long after you start and he will chase your your poor merchant man down and sink it. So we're going to send our frigate over here to the Caribbean where he shows up first. And we're going to buy another one. I've yet to see it where the pirate doesn't sink your first frigate and then your second frigate sinks him. So go ahead and count on 400 gold just to sink the pirate. And then we'll send him out here to patrol the middle. And as you saw when I clicked on the ship, you've got a short move, which is just on the screen that you're on. And you just double click it. Or you have a long move. Uh, this is a port, but this is just the same. Click this and click on the port. It's the same as clicking on this and clicking on the port. Long move gives you the world map, and it gives you three route options. And the third click is where they go to. drawer. In this screen in the cabinet you can load a game, save game, you can save a game. The way you save, you got four save slots. You click on it, click save, and then click OK. And now that slot is saved. To load it, you would select the load, select that, and then go OK. The last thing in here that you can you can access is this and it'll show you uh, world events as they uh, as they update. If you come in here initially before you sell the world like I have it'll just be a blank white screen and you'll think something's broke. It's not. It just doesn't show anything until some events happen. Alright <coughs> Now, as you can see, your ships are moving insanely slow. You would go completely bonkers trying to play this game. And as if you do a search for this game and look at some of the videos, you uh, you can see people losing their mind playing this game. And I'm sure it uh, it people have not played it, and it's missed some opportunities to be played just because people think this is the speed of the game. It's not. It's just that the instructions have got lost in time, and that's part of the reason for this video is to uh, have a place for the uh, instructions to uh, to reside to allow people to play this game into the future. But the way you speed the game up is Alt R brings you to five out of five speed, and as you can see, that is much better. Now, you can also hit Alt S to take you back to speed 1. And you can hit Alt and then tap S to cycle through all the different speeds. It's not advisable to leave it on 5 because things will happen rapidly and the months will pass rapidly. If your ships are sitting in port and you've got it running at 5 speeds, you're wasting time. So my advice is to run it at 5 and there's our pirate in the Caribbean until you get to port and then slow it down to one or two give you give yourself time to uh, think about what you're doing without time passing capture this pirate before he gets out into the ocean and goes after our right now he's trapped in the nope he got out Alright, let's 
this reduced to speed here. That way we have a better chance to uh, actually confront him. You can do this at fast speed. It just happens faster. And like I said, he'll sink your first ship every time. And then your second ship will sink his pirate ship. It seems to be a two to one ratio. I don't know if they have hit points. I don't know if it weakens it. I don't know how it knows, but the second ship is gonna win. I don't know how this transmits to the medium class ships or if a cargo ship ever has a chance to destroy. But in about six games, since I reinstalled this, he, it's always been the same. First frigate sinks, second frigate sinks him. Now I don't know if this frigate's now damaged and it's going to sink easier next time or if the next pirate's just going to take two. We'll see. So for that reason, I always try to keep two, two frigates out and about. That's the other reason you just don't want time to fly, because I believe that has to do with how often pirates spawn, and how often the other other um, countries in the world will uh, attack your settlements. As you see, there's Dutch, and there's French, and Spain, and there's all these settlements. Each one has their own little army, soldiers in their castles. And they'll send their soldiers out to attack your settlements, and so you have to have castles and soldiers to defend your settlements. But that's later on during the, the colonizing, you don't have to worry about it initially. But that gets us into the world map. The, as you can see, there's, there's towns which are established, they have a port, they have their prices. This is the price that you can buy from them at. This is the price you can sell from them at. Then you have unsettled areas. Let's go to the Americas. Here we have a French colony in Canada. And then to the south we have a unsettled area about uh, yeah, Washington area, and then we have unsettled area in the Yucatan, and then down around South America, some settled and some unsettled areas around the world. The other side of the United States, you've got an unsettled area in Canada. And then you've got San Francisco, which is settled on the American coast, which is, of course, strange, because the East Coast is not settled, but somehow the West Coast is, and it belongs to the French. Not, I don't remember that in history, but that's what you have here. send out the ship here. We're still moving slow, so let's speed that up. What we're doing, we're sending our cargo ship. To this little town. It's the closest town that has gold. Once it gets here, Click it in and we'll slow our speed down. And this is one of the people I was showing you in the main menu. He's a settler. This is the annoying harbor screen. Whenever the ship clears the screen, you can click it to end the madness. You click on this guy and see that he's from uh, 
some African country. And you can't do anything. Okay. I guess I could do something with him. Alright. Um, that was weird. Alright, as we can see, gold is... You can buy gold for one. It, they won't buy it, of course. But you can buy gold for one. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to buy 16 gold. The beep that you hear is the success beep. The beep that you're about to hear is the failure beep. Make sure you notice the difference. Oh, no, failure. That means we're fully loaded. There's three types of feedback sounds in the game. One is the success beep. One is the failure beep. And then the other one is a, a repeating beep, which lets you know that there's news items and typically there's a ticker tape that comes across. All right, now that we're full of gold, we can travel back to England with our fortune. Now you may say, well, this game's awful broken if I can just buy gold for one and sell it for 83 in England. Uh, then yes it is broken but it's been broken since it was created because I have the five and a quarter IBM or PC original game and it says in the instructions one of the recommended beginning actions if you want to start a trading empire is to go to that port get gold for a one and sell it for 83 in England so that is an intended feature in the game and not as some claim online a broken version or that DOS box version is broken that is an intended feature for one this is not a trading game it's a colonizing game It's a colonizing and wealth building game. Yes, if all you care to do is make money, you're going to get bored quick. The joy of this game is setting goals for yourself and then trying to accomplish those goals. I only use the trade for gold once or twice or if I start getting close to bankruptcy. Uh, I use it for that. Rather than that, I try to maintain my whatever my goals are, whether it's to colonize uh, certain places, whether it's to defeat certain countries in battle until all their assets are destroyed. Uh, it could be to establish a chain of uh, production for every single resource in the game and ship it all back to England before I consider it a success. Um, you basically have to set your own end goal or, or you'll get bored quick because it's not a trading game. And if you played it even without the gold, you know, the, the gold, whatever you want to call it, hack, it, uh, it would still be a very boring trading game. Trying to find prices in the world, you'd make such small profits that it... And if you colonized places and then simply used that income, it, it would it would be very difficult. Uh, I would believe very boring. Now there are places where you can establish your own gold mine, and then you can get gold. But ultimately, it's even though it's a shorter run between here and here, the cost of miners and the facilities to process the gold. It gold doesn't need processed, it, but the the cost of the workers and the facilities is more than the cost of the distance from here to here. So even, but I typically won't trade gold from here until I get after I get my initial cushion until I establish a gold mine in here. And I believe there's another place somewhere that you can get gold, and then I'll use that 
later on to, to maximize my wealth and build my armies to conquer whatever nation I want to conquer at the time. Alright, and I can sell my gold. And then we'll send that ship back one more time just to make sure we've got plenty of gold. As I believe I've said, you, when you click the world, world travel action, you've got on a local on a local action, you, you click once and then you can move. On a global action, you have to click three times. So if you want to go to one spot, just, just triple click that spot. Or you can make a route and then they'll travel that route. Now we, we dropped off gold. And let's see if our ledger's updated. It takes it, I think, the end of the year until it updates. Yes, we're still at a loss. So it hasn't shown our our trade so let's see it's still September at the end of the year our ledger will update so don't panic when you bring in a big shipment and it doesn't show in your account page all right here we go you'll see this number update first and then you can go in well that was incorrect let's just wait till December all right, my ship is sitting here waiting. And like I said, as soon as the sail gets on the screen, you click it and end that nightmare. All right, let's buy some more gold. November. Have we updated yet? No. But it does show your funds here. So this is our actual funds. It just won't update your balance page to the end of the year. But you'll see the funds in your available funds. So we can go ahead and pay off our bank loan. And that'll that puts no outstanding debt as far as the bank goes. And now let's wait till the end of the year. Right, now we should be able to check our accounts. Here we go. And now it shows our sales from last year, ship wages we've paid out to everybody, our ship costs, buildings, purchases, overheads, your interest, assets. And then our after-tax profit, and we, that's just this is including this is not including the money we pay our loan back with. So this is our actual profit from last year. Uh, our ship's in port, so let's go sell some more gold. All right, and that should take us through part one. We'll go ahead and stop here, and the next time we play, we'll uh, we'll learn about putting people on the ship and taking them off and showing you what the people do. Let's go ahead and save this. All right. We'll see you next time.